All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Though honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. And it reads, Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. All right, and I want to go into a lesson on this family dispute. All right. When you go through the scriptures in proper context, from Genesis to Revelations, or revelation <laughs> this scriptures are referring to a particular family on the earth if you can receive it that family is you negroes latinos native americans west indians and haitians all right you are the nation that is despised amongst all nations and you even despise each other all right real quick this is zephaniah 2 and 1 gather yourselves together yea gather together o nation not desired all right because at the end of the day we are a family you negroes latinos and native americans west indians and haitians and your descendants that are scattered amongst all nations so you have enemies round about you are surrounded by enemies all right and through the spirit when you go through the scriptures the lord separated himself from us because of our iniquity which brings me back to the topic of the lesson the family dispute all right this is a family affair. This is a family dispute. The Lord is our father. All right. The scriptures talk about the Lord being the, the, the father of the nation of Israel and Israel being his firstborn. All right. This is Exodus chapter four and verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And that's us as a nation of people. All right. Northern which represents the Hispanic and uh, Latin, as they're called today, those tribes. And the Southern, which would make up the Negro, uh, West Indian, and uh, you can include the uh, Haitian, as they're called today, tribes. All right. We, as a family, are considered the firstborn of the Lord. Now, that title, as great as it is, comes with responsibilities. And what we're experiencing is, experiencing is the consequences of our disobedience all right our father has chastened us as a nation all right and as at this moment in time he's taking the elect lord will and will part of that number through the straight gate you know the whole world is looking at our nation um and laughing at our nation all right you got jake who will bang on each other you know Jake could stay two streets down from each other and a hold a grudge for a lifetime, literally a whole lifetime. Some of them make it to 35 if they're lucky. Some of them die earlier. And they dedicate their life to even in the score, as they call it. Going body for body with each other. And they all are originally, we're all from the same nation of people. Yet Jake has divided themselves amongst streets and corners and crews. And they'll have more hatred toward each other, as the scripture said that they would, as opposed to their actual enemies. All right. And this is all a product of the curses. Yet as a nation of people, the Lord considers us his firstborn. And when you look at a family, all right, the firstborn is usually the one the parent is hard, the parents are harder on. Because they're going to be responsible for everything should the parents pass concerning earthly matters. Now, we know our Lord is the ancient of days, but concerning the world stage, we are considered the firstborn of the Lord, which means that we are being chastened. All right. The only family that the Lord has known. All right. Now, let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Real quick. Galatians 4 and 1. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Now, when you recall in the law, the firstborn son 
is the one who gets the greater portion. Even if you hate the wife, all right, the mother of the firstborn son, you still are responsible for giving her a uh, the, the firstborn son a greater portion, according to the law. Now, us as a nation of people are considered the Lord's firstborn. As joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, we are inheritors of all things. All right. Lord willing, we be a part of that number as the elect. But this is a family affair. You have people like Vocab Malone, Christianity at large, who are trying to insert themselves into a family affair. But can't recall any curses that apply to them as a nation of people. All right. And the reason that I say that is because of this verse two, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, Yahweh Shai sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. All right, so we've been redeemed from under the, uh, the law. All right. Through the blood of Hamashiach, Lord willing, we be a part of that number of the elect. Now, ultimately, the entire nation of Israel will benefit. All right. Will be uh, inheritors of the blessing. Because when you go into uh, Galatians, the third chapter it talks about the promise being made to our forefather, Abraham. So before we uh, had the law written in stone. The Lord had already promised Abraham that his, his seed would inherit this blessing and his blessing was passed down to Isaac and then to Jacob and then and then uh, dispersed through the 12 tribes of Israel. And now in these latter days, you have other nations trying to assert themselves in a blessing that never belonged to them in the first place. All right. And this goes back to that deep seated hatred that Esau Edom has for us, as well as the other nations. All right. The idea of our nation inheriting something that is not only separate from them, but greater because they're so used to seeing us in this low estate, in this low position. And that's why through the spirit, the Lord, according to prophecy, would have a remnant of his people remember themselves. We're not playing the same game anymore through the spirit. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. We actually have enemies. You have Jake who kill each other. And to them, those are their real enemies because they kill, they've they been killing each other for years now, decades, if you deal with California. But never ask the question of how we got put here. And they never have that same energy for those people who've literally tortured our people and put them to death. You got Jake who mad about a drive-by shooting five years ago and they willfully look over the many postcards of lynchings, the many pictures of lynchings and castrations. But through the spirit, the Lord has allowed us to remember ourselves for what purpose? To Lord willing, share this word for the uh, to build up the elect and to be the recipients. Lord willing, we're part of that number of that salvation. And through the loins of the elect of the nation of Israel, all the nation of Israel will be saved. That means you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans as a nation of people are all going to inherit this blessing. Two thirds of our people are going to have to die on this side, but eventually they will inherit the blessing as well. Because again, before the blessing, before the law, the curse of the law was written on stone and was given to us. All right. On Mount Sinai. The Lord made a promise to Abraham and it was passed down to Isaac and Jacob. All right. Ecclesiastes 44 and 20 reads. I'll start at 19. Abraham was a great father of many people and glory was there none like unto him. And contrary to popular belief, Abraham is not the father of all nations on the planet. All right. Despite the Christian narrative that's being pushed out here in the world. All right. Verse 20 reads, who kept the law of the most high. And this shows you that the law was there before we were given the law on Mount Sinai. All right. And was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. 
And this concerns the circumcision, all right, when it says the covenant in his flesh. Verse 21 reads, therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. Now, if we stop right there at Ecclesiastes 44 and 21, that's very plain that there's a separation between the seed that stands to inherit from sea to sea and other nations. Because to exalt your seed as the, the, uh, as the stars means to exalt is to lift up. All right. Matter of fact, let me just get the Webster's Dictionary version of that. All right. If we get the word exalt, it says... Hold someone or something in very high regard. Think or speak very highly of. Raise to a higher rank or a position of greater power. So a part of the promise, which Vocab Malone and others like him failed to mention, is that the blessing involves a nation being exalted. And that nation is the nation of Israel. And it's not the, the small hats. It's the ones who are suffering the curses whom Yahweh Shai had to redeem from the curse of the law. Going back to this family affair. This is a family dispute between our father and us as sons. Who have failed to keep up the responsibility and the image of, of our father's name on the earth, man. This has nothing to do with any other nation. And everything that goes on with you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans goes back to the curses. All right, the Norteños, you know, the, the, Northern, the Northerners and the Southerners fighting against each other concerning the, the uh, Northern Kingdom. All right, the Southern Kingdom with the Bloods and the Crips, GDs and BDs. And then the, the Northern and Southern Kingdom war again, dealing with the... Uh, the so-called uh, black gangs and the so-called Latin gangs beefing uh, in, in uh, behind the wall and on the streets. All of these things go back to the curses and it all deals with one family of people. All right. And the family dispute that the Lord is having in public for the whole world to see and witness. But as they have seen our shame, Lord willing, we're a part of that number. They're going to witness our glory. But two thirds of our people will be cut off and, and die on this side because they refuse to return to the father's house. When you go into the a parable of the prodigal son. That deals with the nation of Israel. The family that stayed at that time, which were the southern kingdom. All right. And the family that was scattered concerning uh, the northern kingdom during that time period. All right. And other southern kingdom uh, members of the family that were keeping heathen customs. They were considered the prodigal son, even though they were of the same family. Because they uh, left the household and did not uphold the name and the representation of the household. They were considered Gentiles. But this was never meant to include other nations. All right. Now, I want to go back to this Ecclesiastes 44 and 21. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. With Isaac, did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. So this is showing you that the promise was passed down. It didn't just stop at Abraham. You know, Christianity tries to use the, the, the covenant, the promise of Abraham as if it's separate from what was given to Isaac and Jacob. But it's the same promise uh, passed down. Continuing. With Isaac, did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men and the covenant and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him inheritance 
and divided his portions among the 12 tribes did he part them. So this shows you how the promise was passed down all the way from Abraham down to the 12 tribes of Israel. And no man can disannul that. All right. The Lord is not a man that he should lie. All right. He's not wavering. He doesn't change his mind. And what we're seeing through the spirit is the Lord showing us the consequences of our actions. This is how the goal has become dim. All throughout the scriptures, the, sh the Lord shows a clear separation between the nation of Israel and other nations. Even now, it's a separation. You got uh, so-called uh, Asians, all right, Moabites, who get along with Esau, all right? You have Ishmael and Elam, they can get along with Esau, even though Esau's done things to them as well. But they all have one thing in common. They don't like you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They all look down upon us. And this is a product of the curses. This is how we know who the children of Israel are. When you go back to Zephaniah, again, it reads, Zephaniah 2 and 1, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. And that's a cold. When you look at how the Lord set this up, you know, those who are uh, of the hopeful elect are in a two front battle. All right. Really, all Negro, Latino and Native American, especially the men of our nation, are in a in, in, in a battle on multiple fronts against your own people. All right. Those who, who uh, will inflict violence upon each other. All right. Those who will despise you for what you believe in. And then you have the other nations, Esau and his uh, compadres, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Elamites, the Ishmaelites, the Hamites, the Japhites. We got enemies all, all across the board, even amongst our own nation. And the scriptures talk about us being a nation not desired. Now, Christianity will paint the picture as if Israel will have to struggle and, and go through all of these things. We're not just talking about this captivity, but all the things we've went through as a nation of people back to the Babylonian captivity all the way till now. That we've had to suffer all of this punishment and chastisement from the Heavenly Father for our mistakes, just for other nations to come in and say they believe in Jesus and just walk in. And that's not the case. All right. When you go back, let's go to let's go to this. Let's go to uh, one of my favorite scriptures concerning this subject is Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. All right, because it shows you what the Lord plans to do in these days. All right. Ezekiel 39. And I'm going to start at. 21. All right. And it reads, and I will set my glory among the heathen and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them. So the father turned our planet. All right turned the planet into a prison for us. And right now, being in Babylon the Great is supermax. And the Lord turning the prison, the planet, if you will, into a prison has done two things. It's turned two thirds of our people uh, more wicked. All right. The scriptures talk about them uh, surpassing the deeds of the wicked. In essence, they've become better at being wicked because Esau has given them license to do so. But the remnant of our people, all right, are becoming refined in that pure goal that the Lord speaks of in Isaiah, the 13th chapter in the 12th verse. All right. And this is the family affair. But now we're getting to the point where the Lord is about to set a parole date, so to speak. And you have other nations who now want to assume the position, so to speak. And now they want to call themselves uh, chosen. Based on uh, misunderstandings of verses in the New Testament. But this has always been a family affair. 
when we were uh, northern and ke uh, southern kingdom were beefing in the ancient world. No other nation uh, wanted to be a part of us. When we were being afflicted and carried away into captivity, nobody wanted anything to do with us. Even now, we're called an outcast by all the other nations. All right. Continuing at uh, Ezekiel 39 and 23. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore, hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. This is plain. According to their uncleanliness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. And this is that time where the Lord is going to have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. And now all these other nations who have lived deliciously, uh, deliciously at our um, expense are now trying to fall in to the kingdom to come as, as the children of Israel. You know, they call it the replacement doctrine, I believe, or replacement theology, where they believe the church, quotation marks, has replaced the natural house of, of Israel. And it hasn't. And Ezekiel 39 has not come to pass. The heathens don't know that the children of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because right now they believe that the children of Israel are in the land of Israel. All right. Bombing Palestinians. Which is not the case. They say they are, but they lie. And now the true Israelites are being gathered. And now the world is hearing what the, the actual Israelites stand to gain from the coming of the Lord. And now they want to get in between it. This is why guys like uh, Vocab Malone, James White are so obsessed with, the, uh, with uh, us waking up to our heritage. Because it goes back to that deep-seated jealousy and that hate that all the other nations have for the nation of Israel for being chosen of the Lord. And now that it's time for us to come out of our low estate, they're fighting it with all their might. Esau on every front and the other nations, when they hear this truth, they resist it naturally. As they should, because they understand, even if they don't know consciously, they understand that. If we are in, in a position of power, that means that they're going to lose the little power that they have. That when Yahweh returns, Lord willing, we are part of that number. The first fruits are going to be joint heirs. And through the.